I have said over and over again on this channel that if you are trying to get the absolute best quality out of your GoPro, the, the most cinematic images from a little tiny camera like this, you need ND filters. But I get this question over and over again, people saying to me, why, why do I need ND filters? Do I really need ND filters for a little GoPro? Can't I just set it to auto and let it ride? Well, I now have myself two GoPro Hero 9 Blacks and Polar Pro's new Cinema Series ND filters for the Hero 9. And today, I'm gonna put ND filters on one of the cameras, use the 180 roll, and the other camera, I'm just gonna be totally auto. I'm gonna go out, we're gonna shoot some stuff, and you guys, you tell me what you think. You tell me which one you like better. Totally up to you guys to figure out what you like best. And if this video is helpful for you, do me a favor, hit that like button below, super helpful for me. Comment below also, let me know which you like. Do you like with the ND filter or without the ND filter? And if you're looking to pick up these ND filters, first link in the description. If you're gonna buy ND filters for your GoPro, if you're gonna go that route, definitely go Polar Pro. They're, they're the best. So we talked about this a lot on this channel before, but in order to get the, the best looking footage, the most, the most realistic motion blur, you want your shutter speed to be twice your frame rate. So if I'm at 24 frames a second, which I'm at right now, my shutter speed is 1 48th of a second. And if I was to go up to 30 frames a second, I would move my shutter speed to 1 60th of a second. So just twice, twice your frame rate. Whatever your frame rate is, double it, that's your shutter speed, and that will give you the most realistic motion blur. But again, the problem is that if you set your camera to 24 frames a second, you set your shutter speed to 1 48th of a second, then you go out into the bright sunlight, you realize even with my ISO at 100, it's still way too bright. That's where ND filters come in. Little sunglasses for your GoPro. And that's gonna reduce the amount of light going into your camera. So this is how we're gonna maintain the 1 48th shutter speed, but we're still gonna have a decent exposure out in super bright sunlight. We're reducing the amount of light with ND filters. And on Polar Pro Cinema Set, we have an ND8, an ND16, and an ND32, which equates to a three, four, and five stop ND filter all in this kit. And it's back in this nice slim case. Do you guys remember on the, on the Hero 8? On the Hero 8, because it didn't have that removable lens cover, Polar Pro had to come up with this thing, this, this mounty thing that wrapped around the Hero 8, and then you could put these on. But the problem with that was that then, then the case for the three ND filters, it was, it was quite big. With the now removable lenses on the Hero 9, I now have this super slim case again, which oh, I'm very grateful for. Let's go with an ND, nah. I'm gonna pop on an ND16. And you gotta use the ND filters for the situation. So if it's super bright out, I'm gonna go ND32. If it's, if it's bright, but not crazy bright, ND8. And then in the middle for when it's in the middle. And these ND filters by Polar Pro, again, they're, they really are just the best ND filters there are for GoPro. They have 16 layers of coating on them, so they're super smudge proof, super waterproof. Oh, they're waterproof. That's a huge thing with these, is this, I can go surfing with this ND filter on there, which is which is massive. Again, you don't really wanna use ND filters underwater so much because underwater there's already a natural reduction of light, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't need ND filters for any reason underwater. But the fact that they are waterproof up to the same 33 feet or 10 meters as the GoPro normally is with the normal lens cover on there, what that allows us to do is things like I can go out there and I could film surfers. I could be in the water filming a surfer and then I can dunk under the wave and not worry about my GoPro. These filters being waterproof is, is kind of awesome. I'm super excited to go surf with it and be able to get that like down the line shot where the wave is kind of blurry but I'm in focus because there's actual motion blur on my image. Image. That's gonna be super awesome. I'm I'm very excited to have ND filters on. I've been running around with my GoPro without ND filters for, for a week now, two weeks now. And now that I have them again, I will be using them again. And and again, just really quickly to the debate of do you need them or or do they not matter? In a moment, I'm gonna show you the difference between the two, but but basically kind of how I see it is that when you when you go the route of ND filters, when you're gonna take that extra amount of time to say, I really need this shot to look good. I want it to look as good as it possibly can, throw ND filters on it. Take the time, get your settings dialed in. And then times when you're just out on vacation and you're just like, I just want this clip for me, not because I'm gonna put it into a really cool film, 
go go no ND filter and just let shutter speed be auto. This is the easier route. This is a, a tiny bit more challenging because you need to kind of figure out which ND filter you need, get your settings dialed in, but it looks much better. Ah, uh, that's my opinion. I don't want to bias your opinion, but let's let's go outside. I'm gonna go bomb it around. Oh, I still have I still have that Phantom skateboard from Miles that goes like stupid fast. I'll ride that around town using this. That'll give us plenty of motion and plenty of movement in the image, and you can see very clearly the difference between ND filters and no ND filters. Yeah, that's perfect. We'll do a skateboard. I'll take these two. And we'll do a skateboard. What did you guys think? What did you think of the footage with the ND filter versus the footage without the ND filter? First up though, I, I went with the ND16. I put the ND16 on there, but I think I could have gotten away with the ND8. The key is you want as little ND as possible, like the minimum ND, because that would keep your ISO lower. I, I just ran out really quick for a quick skateboard ride. I went with the ND16. I totally could have gotten away with the ND8. I think the ND, Filter footage looked a little bit more grainy, but that's it's just because the ISO was going a little higher because I went with the ND16 and not the, the ND8. For real though, I'm super curious to hear what you guys think about the difference between the ND filter footage and the non-ND filter footage. Also, go back through it a few times. Rewatch that footage a few different times and pause it at different spots to see the still frame where the ND filter footage, there's a blurry background. It really shows the motion. It's almost like, you know when that beginning part of Star Wars where the stars are all there, but then all of a sudden they start going and that shows that shows motion. Like just by having these little white dots on the screen, but then the white dots become these lines, it lets us know that we are now moving through space and time. That's kind of how I feel about ND filtered footage where motion looks like real motion. It 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 lets the viewer know I am moving very fast on this skateboard. Yeah, for me, for me and my style, how I like to convey my films to my audience, I I really like ND filters. I use them on my big camera, I use them on my GoPro, and if I'm using ND filters, I'm using Polar Pro. They're just they're just the best in the game right now. They're they're making the very best ND filters. Even for like things like the Mavic Air 2, they make a super high quality ND filter for a, it's like this big. It's the tiniest little ND filter. It's ridiculous. But they also make things for GoPro. They make them for my big camera. They've got the Peter McKinnon variable ND filter. Yeah, I, I for my money, I'm, I'm gonna spend a little bit extra and go for the best quality filter. Because again, it's in front of my lens. If I was to take an expensive camera and shoot through a dirty window or a low quality window, I would end up with low quality footage. So whenever you're putting a filter on your camera, whether it be an ND filter or a polarizer, whatever it is, you want the very best quality ND or polarizer or whatever filter that is possible for your budget. I really wanna hear what you guys think though, so comment below, hit the like button if this video helped you or if it, if it kinda showed you some insight on ND filters and uh, try hard, take chances. I'll see you guys soon. Now I gotta edit this video, okay.